Are there constructive things that you can do to help restore a culture of life? Find out next on this edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're your program on the right to life, on the culture, and on the battle of ideas. You see, the right to life is actually a very specific thing. It is a legal statement stated in the founding documents of our nation that asserts the government has a duty. That's right. The government has a very specific duty, and that's to protect the lives of the governed, and particularly those who cannot protect themselves. That's why policemen are empowered to stop bad guys from hurting those that can't protect themselves. So government has a very specific duty summed up in the right to life. But there's a battle of ideas, and that battle is raging all around us. Today, we're going to talk about that battle in a bigger sense. We're going to talk about that battle that's been going on long before Roe versus Wade ever happened. This battle is very real. And at this time, we're going to talk about a very specific baby. A baby that was born two millennia ago. A baby who was born innocent. But if you really look at the full circumstances of that birth, and yes... We're singing about that birth at Christmas time. Yes, we are celebrating that baby's birth. But if you look at the full circumstances of that baby and that child's birth, that baby was born into the midst of a battle, a real battle. And I'm sure that like us, that baby didn't seem fully aware of that battle. At that time, that baby, baby Jesus, Just like us, that baby needed to be protected. That baby needed to be nurtured. That baby needed to grow up. And thankfully, he did. We celebrate what happened thousands of years ago with that baby. But you know that there were forces at work that did not want that baby to grow up. That specific baby. There were power players committed to stop that particular baby, to kill that particular baby. And Herod, who was the king at that time, knew that there was a threat to his world, to how he lived. There was a threat to how he exercised his life, and he was willing to do anything to kill as many babies as possible in the hope that he could kill that one baby. You know, we're very thankful for Christ at this time of year. We're very thankful for what he did, for coming to earth, for enduring what he endured, for his tireless and ongoing work, for his redemption, for all who look to him, for indeed what he has done is unsurpassed. We are indebted to his commitment to grow from a baby, to grow into maturity and wisdom, and to endure the challenges that he had to face. And he did. As you know, the scripture says, he grew in strength and wisdom in the sight of God and man. So the birth of that one baby is celebrated now at Christmas time. But remember, remember, that baby was born into a battle. And that battle is still continuing. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how this applies right now. You see, we're thankful that baby Jesus had protectors. As you know, he did have protectors, the Holy Family. Mary, first of all, was so submitted. As you know, her famous phrase in the Magnificat, Be it done to me according to your word. What a commitment. What a willingness to serve. And Joseph, the father of the Holy Family, was spiritually attentive He was aware there was something going on, that there was a battle in the spirit. Something in the spirit was going on. You can't have angels singing to shepherds. You can't have three wise men coming from afar and not think something's going on here. He was spiritually awakened. 
he knew that he had to lead and he was willing to do something then he'd never done. And I want to remind you that if you're living your life, if you're a Christian of any kind, that you're going to be asked to do things as you grow. You're going to be asked to do things you've never done before. I don't believe, I see it nowhere, that Joseph had ever been to Egypt, of all places. But Joseph was willing to be spiritually attentive. Are you spiritually attentive? He was willing to attune what he would do in his own life, to do that which was necessary to protect that innocent life, that one singular life. And he took the family to Egypt. Extraordinary. It really was. Now, today, just like Christ, when we are vulnerable, babies still need protecting. You and I, we were once babies. You might be grown now, but you were a baby. Now, I'm thankful. We were all born into the world at war, but I'm thankful when I was born, the laws of the state did protect me. Someone couldn't kill me because I was vulnerable. And in addition to that, I was blessed to have people protecting me, parents. I was blessed. Some people only have one parent looking out for them. Some people's parents don't look out for them. But I was blessed, and you were blessed. You had protectors. The law protected you, hopefully, unless you were born after 73, then it was down to your parents. But you had protectors. We're in a world at war. There is a spiritual war. It's a battle. And spiritual things manifest themselves to human beings, usually through ideas. Do you know that ideas are spiritual things? So there is a spiritual battle for the mind of individuals, and that includes your mind. And it's about what you're going to do and the decisions you're going to make and whether or not it's good to protect the vulnerable innocent. That battle is happening right now at Christmas time. It's happening right now in the physical world. The battle that Christ was born into actually had physical manifestation. You are still living in that physical world. That world into which Christ was born is the world in which you are living now. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about the first Christmas We're going to talk about the spiritual battle into which that baby was born and that spiritual battle which is raging now and which innocent human babies are still being killed just as wildly as Herod sought to kill indiscriminately. The killing still goes on and specifically targeting innocent lives. We're going to talk about that more and what you can do about it on Life Matters. Life Matters continues after this. You may not realize it, but it's the end of the year giving, Christmas giving, if you will, that allows us to stay on the air throughout the year. We broadcast throughout California, and our podcasts are listened to again and again to help equip Californians to really understand what the right to life battle is all about. Please remember us now at the end of the year. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org, CaliforniaProLife.org, and you can give your tax-deductible donation to Life Matters. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're talking about the first Christmas, and we're talking about the birth of every child. Now, we're talking about that spiritual war into which baby Jesus was born. It was a spiritual war, but it took place in a physical world. This world this planet that you live on right now. The war is still continuing. But now, if your eyes have been opened, you've been given access to victory in this battle. You've been given the ability to understand and to make a difference. Yes, that war is still going on. And there's nothing worse than knowingly killing innocent lives. As you know, the light shined in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. So that killing, Christ brought victory into the world. He brought light into the world. But it doesn't mean that simply because he is no longer physically present with us, that the battle does not continue. In fact, Christ was rather specific. The battle is continuing, and you are engaged in it. 
He has equipped you. In this world, you'll have tribulation. But you're here to face that battle that he overcame. And that battle specifically is targeted at the innocent, to wantonly kill the innocent. So just because we have hope and victory and we sing about that in Christmas songs and Christmas carols, we do. But the innocent are still being targeted. The battle is still on. And this is something that we have to face. You know, you shouldn't think, like many errantly do, that if you ignore or can't see the spiritual battle or hear the cries of pain or see the blood, that somehow this war against the innocent is not raging. It is raging. It is literally raging in our culture. But our culture is trying to fill your mind with other things to get you to not think about that, to dismiss these thoughts. And yet the battle continues. Christ himself reminds us that the enemy, your enemy, the devil, is like a ravenous lion seeking whom to devour. He has come to lie, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have that more abundantly. So Jesus promised that the battle would continue, that the battle didn't miraculously end at the miracle of Christ's birth, but that he brought salvation. The battle is continuing, and you are the heirs of that salvation. You are the heirs of this battle to stand now in his stead. And that requires you to be spiritually attuned, just as Joseph was, to take actions that might be out of the ordinary, but to take actions to defend the innocent. And the innocent are being killed. You and I are blessed to live in the United States. Why? Because certain key foundational ideas were asserted in the building of this nation. You know, my folks came from Ireland, and those ideas were not asserted at the founding of the Irish Republic. But there were ideas asserted at the founding of the American Republic, and specifically that the government had a duty to protect lives, that government must be limited and ensure that it not take lives, but that miscreants as well not take lives. And that's the reason governments are established among men, is what the Declaration said. We need to protect those that can't protect themselves, and every just government must do that. Our nation was founded on the idea that innocent lives should be protected, and it was stated by our founders that that's the principal role of government, to protect human beings, that in fact, human beings are what government's about. Government is not about raw power. Government is actually created by human beings, and its purpose is to protect their lives. So this is very much the heart of the American founding and the assertion of the right to life. But that was lost in 73. That's right. 1973 was a significant year in our battle. You know that there's been a spiritual battle. It's been here on earth. I mentioned at the top of the program, Christmas is significant because Christ came. The Messiah came. But the battle goes back before that. Now, I'm going to quote from Christian doctrine here, but you already know this, that at the beginning of creation, when the fall came, we know that mankind has fallen, but the first fall was actually of the angels. There was a rebellion that the number two man, Lucifer, the highest angel, got full of himself, and he rebelled against God, and apparently fully one-third of the angels also rebelled. One of the interpretations is that he did not like the fact that God had planned for redemption, and that God, it says before the foundations of the world, was planning to be crucified, the lamb that was slain, before the foundations of the world, that this was part of the plan. And that meant that God would become a human being, and that would exalt the nature of human beings. If Jesus lives as a human baby and now a human man, a crucified and risen human man, humanity is extraordinary. In fact, the scripture says, we are made a little bit lower than the angels, and yet we're crowned with glory and honor. It says that in Psalm 8. The devil did not like that idea that these little tiny creatures living on this little tiny planet would somehow have a greater stature than him, would somehow be inhabited by God himself, and that God himself in the person of Jesus would enjoy 
physical reality as a human being. This insulted Lucifer. At any rate, we know that Lucifer rebelled, a war started, and he was cast out of heaven. Where was he cast? Not into hell. That's not till the very end. You got to go to the end of the book. No, he was cast to the earth. And he wanders the earth to and fro, it says in Job. He wanders the earth to and fro. He wants to have his will done on the earth and not God's will. When Christ came, Christ came to fulfill God's will on the earth. And that we have Redeemer means that we too can walk and fulfill God's will on the earth. That makes you a great threat. It means wherever a human being asks God to come into their life, God does. And that means the kingdom of God is made manifest through human beings. That's a great threat to the devil. So he wants to kill human beings, particularly when they're innocent and vulnerable before they have protection, before God can come into their life. He wants to kill them. And that battle is continuing even now. It's a battle that surrounds you. And of course, in 73, in the United States, it was made manifest in the Roe versus Wade decision. You know that there was outrage when Justice Kavanaugh was named. And you know this if you're paying any attention and are spiritually attuned to the arguments that were made at that time. This is entirely about the Roe versus Wade decision. The hard pro-abortion leftists want to preserve the killing of innocent babies. I'm sorry, but it's true. It may sound coarse for me to say it. It's a terrible thing to say, but I have to tell you, it's a worse thing to do. And yet that is what abortion does. It kills innocent babies. And Roe v. Wade basically says that states cannot protect those babies, that it's not really even considered a baby under Roe v. Wade. So this is a terrible battle. It's on us right now. We're celebrating Christmas, and we should celebrate because we have redemption. Because that little baby born 2,000 years ago in that manger has brought us the gift of life, a renewal of life. And we can now participate in spiritual understanding and, like Joseph, do things as we're spiritually led that can protect others. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you can do. We're going to talk about really understanding Christmas and the gift of life because we're involved in that battle of ideas. Again, this is Life Matters, your program on life, on the culture that emanates from the idea that there is a right to life. And that's quite a culture because it esteems every human being as valuable. But there's a battle. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about this battle, about what you can do to help others understand and how you can protect babies, just as I know you would have wanted to protect baby Jesus. You would have wanted to make sure he got out of there into Egypt as Herod's soldiers were killing all the other babies. You can do things now as we look at protecting the innocent. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Life Matters. It's your tax-deductible year-end donations that keep us on the air throughout the year. We broadcast throughout California, and our podcasts are listened to over and over, equipping pro-life individuals in this state for the very difficult battle of ideas. It's your help that allows us to do that. Please consider donating now at CaliforniaProLife.org. CaliforniaProLife.org. Thank you, and God bless you. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Hi, welcome back to Life Matters. We're talking about self-evident truths. Our founders said we hold these truths to be self-evident, that every one of us are created. And we're created with inalienable rights, not given by the government, given by God. So our founders proclaimed that. It's pretty bold. However, in 73, as you know, that was changed. And in 73, basically, that self-evident truth was ignored. And simply put, that truth is that every child is a human being in the womb. Before 73, the laws reflected that. In 1973, they were struck down. We're going to overturn Roe. And this is one of the reasons. Mother Teresa put it well. She said, it's a tragedy to think that a child must die so that you may live as you wish. Yet there's still blind rage in the face of these obvious facts. The desperate actions of Herod, who tried to rule his own world, ended in sorrow for many. Jesus still survived the blade. And for Herod, those actions of killing, they gave him nothing. 
His own death, if you read the scriptures, was very, very tragic. He got the sad reward of simply living as he wished. Mother Teresa, again, put it well. It's a tragedy to think that a baby must die so that you may live as you wish. And that's what we're facing in the Roe v. Wade mentality. Up until 1973, all the states had protected babies. But with Roe v. Wade, it was exactly flipped. All the states were prohibited then from protecting babies. And though it is indeed a spiritual battle, it's a battle in the physical world right now. It's a battle for the laws of those states. Will they protect babies? We're here for a reason, you and I. We're here for a reason in this battle. Now, I have to remind you, sadly, of this. California is indeed a hot spot in this battle of ideas, in this spiritual battle. It was one of the first states to start liberalizing abortion. Colorado, New York, and Massachusetts also were. They had liberalized abortion laws before 73. But still, even those liberalized states said, you know, after 20 weeks, that's a baby. And before 20 weeks, we'll let you kill babies if you have some of those, you know, reasons, those hard cases. What about rape? What about incest? What about life of the mother? What about severe fetal deformity? Those four states had those types of laws, but they still protected babies. They still said after 20 weeks, nope, there's no reason good enough to kill that baby. Look how big that baby is. But Roe said even those laws had to be overturned. Now, here's the problem. There are states like California that continue to glorify the idea that you can just live as you wish. And if a human life somehow gets in the way or discomforts you, you can simply have that human life removed from your life, killed. You're in a battle. We're in a battle for innocent lives. But the light is still shining in the darkness. We celebrate Christmas because we have light. We have understanding. There is hope on the way. That's because it's a self-evident truth that we're talking about. I'm not here, even though we're talking about Christmas right now. That child's life is revealed in nature. It's revealed to science. I don't make this up. I can tell you science proclaims that they can measure the heartbeat of a child as early as 16 days after conception. That's before mom even knows she's pregnant. That's an objective fact. Every cell in that baby's body has a unique DNA. Half of those children are male. This isn't part of the woman's body. This child, in every measurable way, is a unique human being utterly dependent on the protection and goodwill of others. These are facts. They were facts before 1973. And the law reflected that. In California pro-life, we are here to stand. We're going to continue to stand for these self-evident truths. You know that after the Civil War, it was actually one individual who was heroic, Dr. Horatio Storer. He's the founder of modern gynecology. He was an expert, the world's expert in childbirth after the Civil War. And at the Civil War, he saw that the laws were changed, that the laws now protected human beings that had not been protected, that with the 13th Amendment, slaves were freed And their lives were protected. And literally, Lincoln had proclaimed it was the right to life that needed to be asserted for the slaves. He said that in several speeches. Horatio Storer, as the expert, he talked about the lives of his second patient. Because in childbirth, he knew that, yes, the mother's life is very, very important, as is that child. And Horatio Storer took it upon himself. And at that time, he was joined by the American Medical Association. And from the late 1860s into the 1880s, they went to every state to make sure that that baby's life was protected. In the womb, those laws were put into place, really on the same premise, that slavery was ended. This is a human being, and it must be protected by the law if we're to live in a just society. He simply used objective facts, his scientific knowledge, to protect his second patient. Those laws are good. They reflect objective reality. And we're called to do that as well. I want to remind you at this time of year, if you'd like to support our work at the California Pro-Life Council, go to californiaprolife.org. And you can support us and give to our Ed Fund, and you'll get a year-end tax donation. But most importantly, this is your chance to help us throughout the year, because end-of-year giving is where we get a lot of our income for the rest of the year. So please consider helping us in this battle of ideas, this battle to protect the lives of those that cannot protect themselves. 
It's the cornerstone of the American principles that human life needs to be protected and protected under the law. Well, even though this is Christmas time and we're approaching the end of the year, your donation now is of great significance. Not so much for right now, but for the fact that that's what helps us through the rest of the year. That's right. It's our year-end donations that really helps us get through the rest of the year, and we'll need that in 2019. One of the things that you should know is we sponsor not only this radio program statewide, but our podcast serves folks throughout California and the nation. Podcasts are important because people can go back and listen to the facts. Our job is to get the facts out, the facts of life. And through our education program, we have the resources we want to make sure that young mother knows she is a mother. Very few organizations do what we do. The public schools certainly don't. We want to make sure that the facts of life in the womb are known and that child should be protected under the law. There's other things we do, too. Life Fest Film Festival, the most important community in our state, is, of course, the communications community in Hollywood. Important why? Because they impact the whole world. Life Fest has introduced many great pro-life films that you've seen. They started at Life Fest. We do that in May, but your donations now help ensure that it continues. We also have chapters in many counties. Make sure that you're involved in a local chapter. If not, you can start one. Our individuals, we have speakers bureaus, fair booths at county fairs, and people that are involved as pro-lifers in the civic community, not just locally, but all the way up to the state capitol. Your investment now in life can be tax deductible. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. That's all spelled out, no hyphens, CaliforniaProLife.org, or call 800-924-2490. That's 800-924-2490. Outside of California, if you're listening on podcast, go to NRLC.org. You can help the National Right to Life Committee. You know the battle is a national battle. And our national team, go to NRLC.org and find out who your state affiliate is. Every life is valuable. And we must speak up for those that can't speak for themselves. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life. Wherever you are in the nation, you can find out more at National Right to Life. You can find vital pro-life information and also find the access to your state and local Right to Life affiliate. Get informed and get involved.